All right, then. Uh, oh, this is so exciting, and it, it warms my heart. We didn't get a chance to do this last year because of that horrible uh, Writers Guild yeah, strike that went yeah. on and on and on. Uh, so it's been a, a year or so, two years, since we've seen our next guest. It's always a pleasure to have him on the program. It's a cherished holiday tradition. It's called the Holiday Quarterback Challenge. For the tenth year, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back. I mean, I, I, is there a funnier man in the world no, sir. than Jay Thomas? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> He has his own uh, Sirius XM radio program. Here he is, Jay Thomas, everybody. Thank you. Wow. Hey, man, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you. You know, uh... How are you, Paul? Hey, nice to see you, Nice sir. to see you, too. Merry Christmas. How are you doing? How's that uh, radio gig going, by the way? It's going very well. We had a lot of the calls. The Sirius XM thing? People wanted me to turn on you and throw the ball right at your head. That's Why? I don't know. Why? What I have I know. done? It's a vicious group of individuals. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're over there with uh, our buddy uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern. I'm over there. I actually do his show on Fridays. You do his show on Fridays? I do the show on Fridays. I'm like the... I'm like the... Uh, the, the, uh, the uh, I don't talk a lot of sex and stuff. I don't... <laughs> But no, you, you mean you I'm fill, like the you announcer with no sex. You right. fill in for Howard, or are you actually just a guest on the show? I don't know what you call that. I fill in. I'm the Howard Stern mm -hmm. of uh, of Friday mornings on, on 101. Yeah. Now, do you do you have a studio in your home like big stars do, or do you have to go to a place to do the show? I go to a place to do the show. I thought you had a big studio in your home. I don't have a big home anymore, Dave. <laughs> no. Well, I'm sorry. What do you mean? What for God's sakes, I appear one time, and this is about it for me. <laughs> do you ever think about me one time the whole year except for about, this? I think about you all the time. No, you don't. I just want to go home. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Now, um, oh, I'm going to kill you. Uh, now, in I'm addition, kill you in addition to the uh, <laughs> tradition of knocking the meatball yes. off the tree, <laughs> right. there's another part of the tradition which I love. And yes. to me, this is the best, single best TV story ever told sure. by a celebrity on TV. Well, of course. Of course. I think you're supposed to applaud now, you idiots. What? Oh, my God. I don't know. What? I wouldn't, I wouldn't antagonize the audience now <laughs> after what we've just lived through. <laughs> All right. Ready? Oh, yes, I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina when I was a disc jockey. Yeah. And I used to open uh, uh, Dodge dealerships uh, with the Lone Ranger. I would go around and open Dodge dealerships. Now, when you say the Lone Ranger, it was the real Clayton guy. Clayton Moore, Clayton the Moore. actual Clayton Moore. He took it very seriously. He was very stoic. Uh, we would go. Uh, he had the guns. He had the, the sky blue outfit. He had the hat. He had the mask. He had the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we would stand. He wouldn't tell us many things. Once I asked him if Tonto really meant stupid in Spanish, and that's why they call the Indian Tonto. <laughs> And did Kimo Sabi mean kiss my ass in Navajo? Yeah. Didn't want to say. Yeah. So took my, it very seriously. Very seriously. Always met, dressed. Met as the children. He was else. the right. Lone Ranger. I was a long-haired guy. My friend Mike Martin and I would go behind the dumpster during the appearance, and we would get all herbed up. Right. And we would <laughs> continue to be herbed up as the appearance went. As the appearance went. So as the appearance drew to a close, we were not sure where we were, or what planet we were on, or what, what we were doing, or who anybody was, and, and we didn't even know what car dealership we were at after a while. Mm -hmm. So I was just about to get my old beat-up Volvo to right. go home, and, it, and, and they didn't have a ride for the Lone Ranger to get back to the Red Roof Inn, uh, which was on Moorhead Boulevard. So he turns to us and he said, could you, someone give me, I said, we'll give you a ride back. Right. So we put him in my old beat-up Volvo, and he sits in the back, and he's the Lone Ranger. Got the and mask. He got the mask. Everything. And the hat and right. the whole thing, and he had to like hold his guns to get into the car, you know. And he sits in the back of the car like this. And Mike and I are trying not to act stoned, so we're like, <laughs> we're going about you know four miles an hour down, you know. <laughs> we're not saying a word. We stop. It's you know five o'clock traffic. This middle-aged guy in a Buick in front of us. He he stopped, and all of a sudden he wants to get out of the traffic. He backs into the car. I can hear my headlight crash. And he pulls away, and he, and he runs away, and I go, my God, he busted my car up. Uh, uh. So I, I, we got to catch it. So I pull out in my Volvo, and I begin to chase him. we got five cylinders. I'm chasing him, you know, and in the back, the Lone Ranger is just in the back like this, <laughs> stoic, not saying a word, just in the back like that, just like that. 
We chase this guy in the Buick, and we, we, we pull in front of him like that, and Mike and I both jump out, and we go, hey, man, yeah. you crashed into our car back there. He says, I did not. I said, yes, you did. So Mike gets out, and he goes, yes, you did, man. So we're all saying that to him, and he says, well, really, why don't you call the cops? Who do you think they're going to believe, me or you two hippie freaks? And the Lone Ranger gets out of the car. <laughs> He says, they'll believe me, citizen. <laughs> and the guy says, I didn't know it was you. <laughs> didn't know. Didn't, didn't know it was you. All right. We got to go over here now. Yeah. That's, that's a right. great story. Let's go over and uh, knock the uh, meatball right, off the thing. Sure, here right. we go. Uh, now. Let's uh, roll the montage. Here's how it all began. Is that all the montage? Here, let's go back down memory lane. 1998, wow. there's uh, Vinny Testaverde. Vinny Testaverde. Yeah, it's 1999. Eight. I can't read the thing. Thank Eight you. 99. Look at this. Unbelievable. Through the years, it's been 10 years, 2001. Bang, right on the money. You're yeah. just With like, the girls? like a laser. There's I think I got you one. You hit here. one. Oh! Yeah. And then last year, La uh, oh, that was two uh, years, two years ago. ago. Oh! Here's last year. Take a look at last year. There you are sitting at home. Uh, that's a strike. What did I, what, that was me last year at home. Yeah. Now, do I get the throw? Yeah. You, you take three shots, and then if you don't have it, I'll get in. All right, you ready? All right, here we go, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got the Hi, girls, girls again, right? I stab you back. Good to see you. How you been? Okay. There's Watch one. Out, Everybody look out. There's two. Whoa. No. Man. Oh! Yes. <laughs> Give me one more. Give me one more. Yeah! Yeah! Thank you, Dave. How about that, boy? We'll be right back with Mickey Rourke, everybody.